تعالى إبراهيم وعلى آله إبراهيم الحميد المجيد رب اشرح لي صدري ويسر لي أمري وأحل العقدة من لساني فهو قولي الله أنفعنا بما علمتنا وعلمنا أنفعنا رجل علمنا يا رب العالمين Respected brothers and elders and sisters السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته الحمد لله today إن شاء الله تعالى and probably tomorrow will be our last day we'll see إن شاء الله how much we get through today and then إن شاء الله we'll probably have to cover up the entire conversation tomorrow um, we really would like to leave the last asr for us to make dua and, you know, and really ask Allah for forgiveness for the month of Ramadan. So we'll try to wrap it up tomorrow, inshallah ta'ala. So may Allah reward everyone, inshallah. Sitting in tafsir is a, mashallah, it's a very blessed and wonderful opportunity, alhamdulillah, rabbil I mean, I felt kind of sad for yesterday. Yesterday was like the most, probably the most ajeeb conversation we had the whole time, right? We talked about a lot of crazy things, right? <laughs> Allah, yesterday I was like, this is the largest gathering we have, and they're coming in the random, most random of all conversations. It is what it is, though, right? What can we do, right? Allah chooses, we don't choose. Having said that, mashallah, it does, when a person sits for tafsir, you do have to have a certain mindset for it, right? I really want to learn from what Allah has to teach, right? And uh, you have to sit with the patient, be patient before a kitab, right? It's a book, and you have to be willing to learn from it, inshallah. So may Allah reward everyone for sitting throughout the entire month, mashallah ta'ala. So from the last conversations with the Nahzab, I actually kind of like take this more of a meta approach, like a larger approach. Allah ta'ala moves past the dunya way conversations. If you remember yesterday, we talked about how a person will be punished in this world. Okay, but for a Muslim, he's not worried about the punishment here, right? Because people, unfortunately, I think Sayyid Anwar Sahib said it very beautifully. He's like, when people ask me, did I make a sacrifice? You guys remember that? Very ajeeb thing he said. When people say, did I make a sacrifice? He's like, no, I didn't make any sacrifice. You made the big sacrifice. He's like, what do you mean? He said that I, I sacrificed the small little dunya so I can get the hereafter, which is large. It's huge. It's wonderful. But you sacrifice all of Jannah and everything to try to get this dunya. Who made the bigger sacrifice? And it's such a beautiful, profound point. And I thought about it, subhanAllah, really. You know, when we think about, like, people are worried about getting, like, oh, I don't, I don't have this here, I don't have this here, this here. This is such a small little place. If Allah has saved you from the hereafter in Jahannam, you, you earned the best thing, mashallah. So keep that in mind. This is how the surah actually wraps up. Saying after everything we talked about, all the conversations, right? Allah says, think about what your position will be on Qiyamah. Think about what you're going to do on the Day of Judgment. When you stand before Allah Azza wa Jal, that's the big thing. So Allah Ta'ala asked this question and he says it. The Prophet Sallallahu they will ask you that when they hear about Qiyamah, they're not going to ask about how to prepare for Qiyamah. They'll ask, when is Qiyamah? Yes, alukun nasu an sa'a. That's what people will say. Oh, Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, the people are going to ask you, the people are asking you about the day of judgment. They ask you about the hour. Okay? Qul innama ilmuha indallah. What is the Prophet Sallallahu supposed to say here? He has absolutely no knowledge of this. So the Prophet says, say, say the knowledge is only with Allah. And what could ever make you know? This is a very be beautiful thing. You'll, you'll appreciate this, inshallah. You'll probably know this in the Quran, Adara Yudri, right? Wama Adaraka, for example, right? Adara in Arabic and Yudri both mean to make, give someone diraya, to make someone understand something, like to give you some information, give you a clue, right? So when I tell you, Wama Adaraka and Wama Yudrika, one is past tense, Adara, the other one's present future tense, Yudri, okay? And so it's very interesting the way the Quran uses it. This is a little nice Quranic benefit you can take, inshallah. That when the Quran uses it, when it uses the past tense, it uses it like, for example, for example, different. So it's very interesting. When you use in the past tense, the meaning comes out like this. That you there will you could there's no way you could have had knowledge for this. There's no knowledge for you for hear this, right? You won't get any knowledge here. It's been blocked off, past tense, right? And so Allah Ta'ala says, since I blocked off the knowledge for you, I closed this door, don't worry, I'll open it for you. So usually, whatever other laws mentioned in the Quran, Allah gives you the jawab. So he says, for example, qadr, what will make you understand about the Laylat the, al-Qadr? Laylat al-Qadr is better than a thousand months, right? What will make you understand about Jahannam, right? Narullah al-Muqadr, it's a blazing fire. Allah gives you an answer. Wherever Allah says, Adara, He gives you an answer afterwards. He says, I closed the door for you, Meaning past tense is shut. But I opened it here. Take some information. When Allah says yudri though, when I yudri in Arabic would probably the best translation I can give you is there is never a single moment that will come that will give you information about this. You will never going to get information about this. When I yudri is present tense, future. There's never going to be a single second where you get any knowledge about this. Allah uses it in two places. Allah uses it in a place in Surah Abasa. Surah Abasa says Allah that says when I yudri ka laallahu yazaka. What could possibly make you understand? Maybe he can get hidayah, okay? In other words, what? That when a person, subhanAllah, you talk to someone, you never know. You don't know. Does a person ever know if a person will get hidayah or not? You and I would probably give up, right? We say, forget it. Andrew Tate will never accept Islam, subhanAllah. And then he does. Allahu Akbar. You don't know. Allah says, that's not a knowledge you have. What's, that's one knowledge you don't have. What's another knowledge? 
وَمَا يُدْرِيكَ لَعَلَّ السَّعَةِ You have no knowledge about the Day of Judgment. There's no way, never a single moment in life will a person get this knowledge, right? Because if Rasulullah did not get it, you and I have no chance. So Allah Ta'ala says something though deeper. He says, forget about that. وَمَا يُدْرِيكَ You're not even going to get any chance to learn about this. لَعَلَّ السَّعَةَ تَكُونُ قَرِيبًا Perhaps, maybe, Allah says, perhaps, maybe, the Day of Judgment is close. Perhaps, maybe, the hour is close. Now we have to think about that, right? This is what Allah wants to ponder upon. He wants us to think about that if it was close, what would you do? What would you do? How would your life be? How would we interact? How would we live? How would we function anymore? Knowing that Qiyamah is right around the corner. What does close mean? How long is close? Is it a year? Is it a month? Is it a week? Is it a day? Is it right after Asr today? Allah Ta'ala says, how close do you need it to be? Does it really matter? Right? This is the thing. We have not lived a life. Allah Ta'ala is saying, we have not lived a life that is living like a person who knows Qiyamah is there. Because close or far, will Qiyamah happen? 100% is going to happen. If it were to happen right now, how would my life, am I ready for that? Am I prepared for that? This is what Allah Ta'ala says. That don't worry about the when. Ask the question about how and did I prepare? These are the big questions a person needs to wonder for themselves. Mm -hmm. And unfortunately, we haven't lived that life. This is what the ayah is telling us. Inna Allah adda lil kafirin. Allah says straightly to the, I'm sorry, to the disbelievers. Inna Allah adda, inna Allah la'na lil kafirin. Allah that gives his la'na, he gives his curse to the disbelievers. The la'na of Allah Ta'ala means to be distant from the mercy of Allah. This is completely similar to a previous ayah we read. Allah Ta'ala says about the believers, yusalli alayhim. Remember that? Yusalli alayhim, he gives mercy to them. When Allah Ta'ala gives you his salah, he gives you his mercy. You become closer to Allah. Okay? And so when you are a believer, mashallah, you get the rahmah of Allah Ta'ala. And so you get closer and closer to the point that you become so close to Allah Azza wa Jal. salam. The day that you meet Allah. These are all ayats previously in the surah, right? The day that you meet him, Allah gives salam to you. That's how close you are. Allah will give salam to you directly, mashallah. The beautiful thing we will receive, inshallah. This is the closeness to the, pre to, to the, the believers. Allah will give us on the day of judgment. But on the, uh, for the kafirin, what is it? That no matter that if the believers are so close to Allah, the kafir is so distant from the mercy of Allah Ta'ala. Allah says, my la'na is there. La'na means to be distant from Allah Ta'ala's rahmah. Allah Ta'ala says, وَعَدَّلَهُمْ أَجَرًا karima." Allah has prepared for the believers a beautiful, uh, a, a, a beautiful and generous reward. And that is Jannah. And so what does Allah Ta'ala say over here? وَعَدَّلَهُمْ سَعِيرًا Allah Allah's prepared for them the blazing fire. The eye is literally the opposite of what you heard before. Allah Ta'ala says for the believers, He gives them mercy. And He gets them a Jannah for them. And Allah Ta'ala says for the disbelievers, He gives them uh, the curse of Him. May Allah Ta'ala save us from that. And he gives them the fire Jahannam, right? And this is the thing. When a person understands that they'll go to Jahannam at the end, la ilaha illallah. Like what, what could be a bigger musibah, bigger penalty, bigger punishment than Jahannam? You think it's going to be what? One moment, two moments? Allah says, Qalidina fiha abada. They will reside in there forever and ever. Forget about one second, two days, three days, four days. You think you and I can even take a moment in Jahannam, la ilaha illallah? Allah Ta'ala says, my people are worried about such small problems, small little issues in this dunya. Allah says, think about the bigger problem of Qiyamah. Would you save yourself on the fire of Jahannam or not? This is the big thing. They will not find in there any guardian, nor any helper to help them in there. SubhanAllah. This is the thing. A person in this world, you know, and it's going to get there, inshallah. We're going to, it's going to touch on the next ayah. Why did the person dis disobey Allah? A person disobeys Allah because there was someone in this world that he thought this was my helper, my friend, my companion. I sat with them, I, I enjoyed with them, you know, I lived with them, I was happy with them. This was a good friend of mine. And so I was hopeful, you know, these people will be good people for me. When they find in Jahannam, though, that same person, they're not there anymore. They don't find any wali, any nasi, no helper, nothing at all. This person, where did they go? They're burning in the fire like they are. La ilaha illallah. And then they wonder, like, subhanAllah, how do I do this, right? Yawma tuqallabu wujuhuhum finnaw. This is a profound ayah, profound ayah Allah that it says. The day when their faces will be flipped in the fire. The day when their faces will be flipped in the fire of Jahannam. What does it mean to be flipped? It's a fire, right? So when you are burning in it, what happens? SubhanAllah. It's like someone who's roasting something. They flip it like this way and this way and this way. And so they mention one way, tuqallabu means that they'll be flipping in the fire of Jahannam. Another interpretation means they'll go from punishment to punishment, flipping from adab to adab to adab. La ilaha illallah. La yawma tuqallabu juhuhum. Allah just says the day when their faces. What is the face? Brothers and sisters Islam, what is the face? It is the very thing that we all try to do. We try to save face before everybody. When a person disobeys Allah or disobeys Islam or turns away from Islam, why did they do it? I got to save face. 
Why did the lady not even literally? It says, why did not? We talked about niqab earlier. Why did she decide to uncover her face? I have to save face. Everything is about saving this to make sure my face looks good. So then what? He cuts the beard. He doesn't care. doesn't practice deen. Nothing. Because why? I have to save face between the, before these people. Allah says that very face that you tried to save will be the very face that we flipped in the fire. May Allah save us from that. It's a profound reminder to everyone. Allah Ta'ala says, Yaqulun, what will be their cry? This is the thing. Think about it. You, you, may Allah save us. But if a person was in the hellfire, but, and they were thinking about what to say, like what type of remorse, what regret, what musibat, what nadamat would you have? What worry would you have, right? What big concern would you have? Yaqulun, they will say, Ya laytana. Woe to us. We wish. Ata'na Allah. We wish you obeyed Allah. Wa ata'na Rasula. We wish you would obey Allah and his Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. They're literally saying, yeah, Allah, we could have done ita'a of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. But we did the, the ta'a of these numbskulls and idiots. And these people, these fools, the jahileen, they're burning here. Right? And they, they go and say, Rabbana, inna ta'ana sadatana. Oh Allah, we follow these leaders. Wa kubara'ana and our elders. We follow these guys. These people that were kabir. Kabir means what? Someone who's big, right? Someone who's a celebrity. We thought this Lady Gaga and this Lady Doofus and this person, this Be'aquf, right? We thought these people will lead us. We listened to them. We obeyed them. We decided to follow their lifestyle. We liked them on Twitter. We liked them on Instagram. We watched, followed them on Facebook. We did whatever they did. We didn't listen to you, Ya Allah, because we want to listen to them. We didn't follow Sunnah because we want to follow them. Allah Ta'ala tells us very clearly, this is the cry of the people of Jahannam. Well, so what happened? We followed them. They're the ones who took us off the path. They're the ones who took us off the path. They misguided us. They threw us off. Right? And this is the thing. It's a hard, strong. I think it's a beautiful. Rabbana atihim du'afayni min al-azab. You know, subhanAllah. You know, you, if you could, you know, subhanAllah, Allah only gave you one phone. But some people we love in this world so much, we wish we couldn't just like their photo one time. We wish we could like it two times, you know? Like we love them so much. We wish you could put two hearts and three hearts. Right? We wish with so much of them, right? When people have those TikToks and stuff, they just like hard, 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 hard. People going crazy, hard, 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 right? Going this, right? They love these people so much. Go much noon over these people. They will go pagal over them, subhanAllah. If I told, if literally, if we had any celebrity were to come today, right? Meaning like kafir, whatever, right? Told them that the masjid is going to be available for like, even like Mr. President Joe Biden, Sleepy Joe, whatever. People, everyone will be coming. Oh, well, I want to meet Sleepy Joe too, right? It's crazy how much we love and adore and care and so much like and subscribe and share and whatever, whatever, whatever. Allah Ta'ala says the only thing you're going to say about those people in Jahannam is what? May Allah save us. The only thing that people will say, Rabbana atim du'afayni min al azab. Allah give them double punishment. Allah gives them double punishment because they screwed us up. Ya Allah, if we're going to suffer, anhum, if we're going to get your la'na, we're not going to be near your mercy, Allah. anhum la'nan kabira, give them the major la'na, Ya Allah. They forget about liking them anymore. You hate them because this is the reality of the matter. If they couldn't save you from Jahannam, then why would you follow their footsteps? Why would you walk on their path? This is the thing, right? People have to remember that why are you doing this ibadah? You know, people only do ibadah because other people are doing ibadah. This is a good reminder after Ramadan, right? We're doing ibadah because other people are doing ibadah. Okay, well, let's say these people weren't there. Would you, who are you worshipping? People are worshipping what? They worship feelings. Some guys are not accepting Islam because they're not feeling Islam yet. I don't what? <laughs> it's what? I don't worship feelings. I don't worship people. I worship Rahman. I worship Allah Azza wa Jal. And so after Ramadan, inside Ramadan, it's the same Allah. The Fajr has not changed. Allah is still there. Aisha is still the same. All the stuff is the same. Why did I decide to change in the middle? This is the thing. When people criticize you and attack you for practicing your deen, you say, mashallah, don't worry. You be majnoon for your dunya. I'm majnoon for Allah. That's it. La ilaha illallah. Because why? Because I know where it's going to help me. That when that day comes, when people will be crying in Jahannam, I'll say, inshallah, I'm drinking my cups in Jannah. That's what it is. You have nothing to worry about. Let people cry. Let them bark. Let the dogs bark. Because dogs only bark. The human beings, mashallah, they stay silent. They say, La jahil. We don't need idiots, please. Leave us alone. Just worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Leave it alone, inshallah. Become majnoon for Allah. When you're crazy, you know, this is the thing. We care so much about what sinners have to say, you know? Like, may Allah forgive. We don't want to judge people. I'm just saying that people who are not practicing deen, we care so much about what they have to say. But they don't care about what you have to say. <laughs> right? They don't care. They don't care. Whether you practice or not, have no relevance to the life. So why do you care? <laughs> You, the way you treat me, I'll treat you. I don't care. This is how I'll live, inshallah. Because I know this life is pleasing to Allah and Rasul. And that's who I want to be with on Qiyamah. It's a good reminder. It's a good reminder. Don't take it that you're going to Jahannam, okay? Allah save us from that. Take it as, Ya Allah, I'm trying my life best to not be this person. So Allah wraps it up with a very beautiful ayah. I just want to start it today, inshallah. We'll wrap it up tomorrow. It has a beautiful story. Maybe we'll get through the story today, inshallah. We have like five minutes.
يا ايها الذين امنوا لا تكونوا كالذين اذوا موسى او ذوز يو بيليف دونت بي لايك ذوز هو هارمد موسى عليه السلام هو ذوز هو موسى عليه السلام بني اسرائيل رايت دونت بي لايك بني اسرائيل دونت بي بني اسرائيل come on you guys don't like bani israel no one likes bani israel bani israel don't like bani israel okay they literally you call a you call a jew a jew they think you insulted them and like that's who you are i don't know what else to say man. <laughs> you know there's only 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 a uh, race and ethnicity in the world that they don't like to be called that like la ilaha illallah you were to call me bangladeshi i feel honored it's good mashallah pakistani good indian mashallah right gujarati you feel good right you feel happy you call him a jew he's like why do you call me a jew we want allah bani israel don't like bani israel allah that says don't be like bani israel Don't be like someone who says "Sami'na wa asayna," that we listen and we disobey, that we heard the message of Deen, we heard Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, but we say we don't want to listen to him. La ilaha illallah. Don't be like those who harm Musa Alayhi Salam. Fa barraahu Allahu min ma qalu. Allah that says He had freed him from whatever they said. Okay, so what did they say about Musa Alayhi Salam? Musa Alayhi Salam was the dindar of the dindar Alayhi Salam. He was someone that Subhanallah they said about him that he was so mashallah. You can imagine what kind of build he had, right? This man, mashallah, you can hit the gym for thirty days, a thousand days, mashallah. You're not going to be as tough as Musa. The man was, mashallah, powerful, intense, and just just the reverence that he when he walked in the room, you knew it was Musa. But he was so shy before Allah Taala. Such modesty he had. He used to cover himself all the way up to the wrist. His whole body would be covered. This is a man that's you want on Instagram, but he wouldn't be there. Subhanallah. You know he would just be so shy before Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala. They would look at this taqwa Musa Alayhi Salam. They would look at this piety Musa Alayhi Salam and say probably he has a disease. That's why he's concealing us. Crazy people, crazy people. Meaning what? The same way people criticize us for practicing deen, right? They say that you practicing so much deen probably there's an issue with you, right? That's probably why you're practicing some type of murad, some type of disease you have. Laila, who's really diseased? So Allah Taala made it that look, you're gonna insult my Musa alayhi salam. That's not gonna happen. So then what happens is one time Musa alayhi salam he goes to take a ghusl, right? And so hadith is Sahih Bukhari. So after he goes to take a ghusl, he leaves his clothes on a rock, right? And so then he goes inside, mashallah, and tr- he was covered, inshallah. I think people, when they narrate this, they think he wasn't covered. He was a nevi, okay? You're not allowed to take a shower naked, okay? So you well, should be covered, something, right? So then, because he covered, mashallah, as much as he could cover his parzaura, and he goes inside, right? So then Allah made the rock come alive and said, oh, rock start running with Musa Aysan's clothes on top of it, right? So then Musa Aysan, you know, he, the, the rock gets up and goes, assalamu alaikum, out of here, and then the rock starts to run, okay? And it's running and running. Musa Aysan's right. You got my stuff. And he took his staff. He started to run through the whole community of Bani Israel. And with the ro- staff in hand, started hitting the rock and hitting the rock and hitting the rock. And people saw, bashara. This is not a human. In hadha illa malakun kareem. This must be a noble angel. They look at him, subhanAllah. Allah says, he freed them. He freed him for whatever criticism they said. And this is what you have to understand. I have to understand. When you practice deen, Allah says, don't worry about your izzah and your uh, whatever, your face and your dignity and stuff. Allah says, don't worry. I'll preserve it. I will take care of it. When people criticize you and hurt you and harm you, don't worry. Allah said, you are on my side. You are my hizb. You're my group. Allah said, I take care of my group. It's a little bit of hardship in the beginning. You show Allah that I'm true and I'm sincere. I'm genuine to you, Allah. I'm mukhlis to you. After you show Allah that you're mukhlis, Allah says, congratulations. I'll take care of you like I take care of my mukhlis. Allah. He has an illustrious face before Allah. Allah that says, if you want to wedge, You'd look at Musa alayhi salam. He was someone in this dunya. They used to talk to Allah Taala. If someone in this dunya used to talk to Allah Taala, Allah that says that one day you and I will have a wajj too, inshallah. Don't lose that wajj for someone else's wajj. Don't lose this face that you have before Allah because you want to fulfill someone else's dunya. Don't do that. Don't after Ramadan, please think about for yourself. Just think about it. Is Nabi sallallahu alayhi Allah says don't harm Nabi sallallahu alayhi wasallam like they used to harm Musa alayhi salam. And I want to remind everyone: what harms Nabi sallallahu alayhi wasallam more? Is it the kafir? Who criticize and insult Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, or is it the Muslim that knows Sharia and Islam and says, "Ya Rasulullah, I don't want to listen to you." This is the thing. Remember what harms Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam more. Allah says, "Don't harm my messenger." Think about for yourself, inshallah, what it means to live a life according to Allah and Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Because in the day of judgment, make sure you have a good watch before Allah Azza wa Jalla. So may Allah grant us that tawfiq, inshallah. May Allah allow us to always honor the state of the Deen that Allah bestowed upon us, and to always honor this Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Thank you for listening to Muhammad Anas.